In the video Pressure Pot 101, we discussed the basic parts of the pressure pot, their functions, and how to adjust the flow of valves to achieve a usable abrasive flow. In this video, we will discuss a couple modifications that can improve the performance of your pot and explain how these modifications function. A popular and handy way to control abrasive blasting is with a foot pedal valve. The foot pedal valve eliminates the need for you to squeeze the dead man every time you want to sandblast and lets you concentrate on a surface to be etched. These valves mount at the bottom of the pot just after the mixing valve and are easy to retrofit onto any pressure pot with just a few simple fittings. Foot pedal valves are air operated and require a separate air supply line that can supply air at a higher pressure than that which is going to the pot. A T should be installed in the supply line before the main air regulator for this purpose. Although not mandatory, it is recommended that a second regulator be added onto the line to regulate the pressure of the air going to the foot pedal and valve. Since there is no consistent air flow through this line, it is normally a smaller diameter flexible line, which also aids in positioning the foot pedal for convenient use at the sandblasting cabinet. The high pressure air line goes to the foot pedal. Typically, the foot pedal is a spring-loaded device consisting of a normally open air valve. The diaphragm shutoff valve is installed after the mixing block that mixes the media from the pressure pot and the sandblast hose with the nozzle on the end. A separate high-pressure line from the foot pedal connects to the shutoff valve. There are a number of different styles of diaphragm shutoff valves, but they all operate similarly. Since the control of the air and media flow is now controlled by the foot pedal, the dead man valve at the end of the output line can be replaced by a simple, more maneuverable fitting and nozzle assembly. Air flows through the regulator, supply line, pressure pot, and media valve as described in Pressure Pot 101 video. Air also flows through the T installed to, uh, to the foot pedal. The foot pedal has a normally open valve in it, and unless you are stepping on the pedal, air flows through the pedal to the diaphragm shutoff valve. When air is supplied with sufficient pressure, the diaphragm valve is closed and shuts off the flow of air media to the output line. The pressure required to shut off the diaphragm valve is relative to the air pressure in the pressure pot. It usually takes a 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 pressure differential to make the valve operate reliably. Stepping on the foot pedal shuts off the air flow out of the pedal to the diaphragm shutoff valve and the valve opens, allowing a mixture of air and media to flow through the valve and output line to the nozzle. Anytime the operator lifts his foot or walks away from the cabinet, the pedal lifts up again, supplying high pressure air to the diaphragm shutoff valve and shuts off the flow of air and media to the output line again. The bottom inside of some of the less expensive pressure pots is similar to a funnel. If you can see inside the pot, all of the abrasive packs into the bottom of this funnel and can easily restrict or plug the flow. This is especially problematic when using very fine media or when the humidity is high and the abrasive has a lot of moisture in it. A simple fix for this is to add a ventilated standpipe to the bottom of the pot. Remove the media valve assembly from the bottom of the pressure pot. Measure the diameter of the hole in the union fitting which attaches the media valve to the pot. This is the hole which the air and media must pass through. At the local hardware store, find a piece of thin walled copper or hard plastic tube that will fit into that hole without reducing the inside diameter any more than you must. As long as the inside diameter of the tube is at least twice the diameter of the hole in your nozzle, enough media will flow through. The standpipe should be 6 to 8 inches long so you don't need a lot of material. Drill a series of 3 16 or quarter inch diameter holes perpendicular to each other down the length of the tube. Be sure to clean up any burrs left behind from drilling. Attach the standpipe to the union fitting. If it is a loose fit, use epoxy to secure it in position. Be sure not to get any epoxy on the union threads or below the tube where it would restrict the airflow. Reassemble the pressure pot inserting the standpipe inside the bottom of the pressure pot. If you could see inside your pressure pot now, you would see that instead of all the media trying to flow through one hole, it now has many, and if one clogs, the grit continues to flow through the others. Your clogging problems will be reduced significantly. 
This is an inexpensive fix for a very common and frustrating problem.